go back. Okay, hold on. I gotta turn around. around. Oh, it's getting big, 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 big. That is huge. Huge. That's a wet. I got it. The tornado has touched down in the city of Joplin. I have never seen a tornado form that quickly to a mile wide tornado. tornado. Go east right up here, go east right up here. Yeah. This is like the end of the world. Our house had been flattened. We did not know if our son was okay. People were being hauled away with emergency personnel holding just pieces of these people together. It was horrific. I never really thought that I would have friends that die in a tornado. Oh my goodness. Man, this is going right in the heart of Joppa, man. Well, we are getting reports that uh, most of the rain has passed through there, but uh, they are seeing what uh, what people are considering a wall cloud, uh, 20 to 30 miles per hour. Obviously, some clouds have some uh, people concerned, mm -hmm. uh, basically between Galena and uh, Joplin. It was on a Sunday, and so I remember it was just a very hot and humid day that day, and you can kind of see a storm rolling in from the west. Kevin I was uh, actually attending my uh, son's graduation. It was uh, the high school graduation here in town. The skies were starting to become a little uh, overcast. You could see uh, some thunderstorms building off uh, to the west of the city. There's a storm you see coming across the uh, Kansas border now, just about to make it to the Joplin area. We also have some showers and storms across northern Arkansas. I was in the newsroom at 5 o'clock. We knew the tornado watches were out there. We knew the tornado warnings were out there. But it wasn't until about 0505 or when we um, started listening to the AM station in Joplin. KCRG news time is 528. We're live storm team coverage here on the stations of Samar Radio. Again, the tornado warning in effect. For well, I was with two of my really good friends. We were just kind of driving around listening to the Cardinals and the Royals on the radio and just listening to the baseball game. The baseball game got switched over to the emergency broadcasting. I've been in a lot of thunderstorms. You, you could definitely tell that it was different. We began taking it more seriously. We wanted to find a place to just get out of the hail that they were calling for. Please do take heed. Get in your tornado shelters right now. We can't stress this enough. Take heed. This is a dangerous weather situation. Okay, where are you at? I moved from Seattle to Joplin exactly two weeks before the tornado to the day. I was at my friend's place that I was living with at the time since I just moved here. His name's Sam, and me and Sam and his uh, three-year-old son went outside. To my west, it was really, really dark, and there was lightning and thunder. It was still, I thought, a ways away at, at the time. Five miles? I'd never had, you know, seen a storm system like this. You know, you're kind of preparing yourself of what's coming next, and you really don't have a chance to prepare. Chad Elliott in the KCRG 24-Hour Storm Center. KCRG News Time is 528. Numerous calls into the station from storm spotters and listeners reporting a funnel-like cloud. Wait, wait, pull it, go up further. Get further, get further. Go ahead, do it, go ahead, do it, get further. Not here, up there. Straight ahead, Scott, straight ahead. Well, I've been chasing for about 11 years now. Even before I got my driver's license, I uh, dragged my mom out to go storm chasing because I couldn't drive. There were a few other guys that were in the car. Wait, stop, 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 it's coming towards us. We started to notice a uh, rotation to our south down the road. So we went headed south towards the base of the thunderstorm. Oh, wait, okay, hold on. We noticed bright flashes, and those are transformers on power lines exploding as the tornadic winds are hitting it. I see, I see, I see, I see. We're getting closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer. Power flash. We are going to Wait, get closer. stop, 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 it's right in the field. We're getting closer, we are going to get closer. Isaac, it's right there. I know, I know, it's right there, I know, but we can get closer. Oh my gosh, roll down your window, roll down your window. Oh. I've never seen a tornado form that quickly from a little rope tornado dancing in a field to a almost mile-wide tornado in 20 seconds. So that was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. We got RFD. Uh, oh, 
dude. Okay, hold on. I got oh, it's getting big, 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 big. That is huge. Oh, dude, that's a wet. I got it. Debris, debris. Okay, okay, big tornado. Big tornado. Big tornado. Go east, right up here. Go east, right up here. Uh, I can't. Right up here. Go this, for it. This is where it crossed, by the way. Go, go east, turn right here on the dirt road. As a chase team, we make it a priority to warn the public. We got the idea to call uh, 911 in Joplin. Hi, I'm calling because I'm watching a strong, large tornado heading towards the south side of Joplin, Joplin. right now. As we came out of the graduation, I had decided that I was going to take my family home. I had my wife with me and, of course, my daughter and my son who had graduated. I just looked at my family, told them, sorry, you're going to have to go with me to work, and we turned off and, and went to the fire station. 246, just for information, we have power lines down on a car. We'd started getting reports of debris and damage, so we uh, discontinued emergency responses and had our crews take shelter until after the storm passed. 272, 223. I can't reach my wife. Can I go? So stand by on that until we can figure out what uh, we got here. The target one, and Chief Randolph has advised that we would be waiting before we send anyone out or any of their vehicles out for search and rescue. I was working in dispatch at the police department. I was the patrol one dispatcher. I handle all radio traffic for the officers that are on the street. I'm in service. I have control of the street. Is our paging system still working? We are unsure. We're going to attempt it. We are in the basement level of the police department. We have no idea what's actually going on outside or how much damage there is or anything like that. But we know we've been hit by one, and it was obviously slow moving because we were still getting reports as it went across. One of our officers was on the east side of town, and the tornado took a southerly turn and it started heading right towards where his location was. One, two, three, three. I'm on range line now. You're gonna hit that line? Yeah, just uh, kind of go slow and don't uh, keep an eye out because we're not sure where it's going or where it's headed. Tornado on over Barney J. Tornado over Barney J. I'm in tornado! I'm in tornado! The wind's blowing so hard his windshield wipers won't even work. His side window was broken out, so he's getting debris and rain inside the vehicle with him. Who was that? It was Waters. Waters, I'm in the tornado. Copy. Copy. If you can, try to find a shelter or somewhere to pull it in here. Are you injured? We, of course, took radio silence for him at that point. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. You got a way out? I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. You just hope at that point you can't panic or do anything like that when you're in my position at least. Officer Waters was trapped in the tornado. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. I'm going northbound, but I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, we just need contact with us, so we know you're okay. okay. I, I'm, I think I'm north of it, but I don't know. He did finally see coverage under the bridge. I should have drove through the lab again. I'm good. Okay. It was me and my husband's first wedding anniversary, and we were at the Royals Cardinals game up in Kansas City. We had just moved up here in Joplin. We called my mother in law to see how she was doing and our son was doing. They said there was tornado warning. I told them to just go ahead and hunker down because we didn't know that there was necessarily a tornado. It's pretty common to be in tornado warning here in Joplin. 
This is KZRG. It's been a while since we've seen an actual tornado touchdown in Joplin, and obviously we hope the damage is minimal. As we were witnessing the tornado, we also had another part of our team uh, in a different vehicle, uh, and it was Kevin and his dad. Oh, oh God, you, okay, you go, go down the road a little bit, go down the road a little bit. We were at the northwest side of town coming in, and we could see the storm you know, coming in, it was just black and dark and nasty. And we top a hill, and then by the time it moves over the road, it was already full-blown tornado, probably quarter, at least a quarter mile wide. It's going to cross the road. You said, oh, gosh, OK. Got it. There, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There it is. There it is. This is going right in the heart of Joplin. I mean, it's going to go just a little. Oh, no, you're right, it is. All right, well, it's east of us now. I just don't know where. Knowing what the path of the tornado was, it was a pretty sure thing that it was going to go right into the heart of town. You go out and try to film this thing, and it's kind of exciting to film all of the wild nature, and then come to the realization that it's going to really do some major damage and uh, tear people's lives apart. As it came closer and closer, you could actually see the curtain of rain coming at us, and then the tornado sirens started going off. I had never heard a tornado siren before. Where are we going? We got in the closet below the stairs, and so I just kind of pointed the camera out the door. The light flickers and goes out for a second. I thought, maybe that's the worst of it. When it went out that last time, it was dark. And uh, it was a different world at that time. There's probably 18 or 19. I think at that point there were probably like 20 other people and it was dark because there was no electricity. Uh, I, uh, at least probably 10 or 12. It kind of just felt surreal. It was almost like you were living a dream. The sirens aren't going. Growing up in Joplin, you're around tornadoes or you hear of them all the time. But I never really thought that I would have been the guy that dies in a tornado or has friends that die open a tornado. Hey, where do you want me to put everybody? Joplin 2615, we have a house that has been struck. The top of the house has come down on the people. This tornado was very unusual. Number one, very wide damage path and then very slow moving as the storm was still going through town. I actually got out in some of the hail and wind, uh, and we just couldn't make it across town because of the debris. The 911 phone did not stop ringing. You couldn't pick up the phone to try and call anybody or try to do anything without there being somebody there. At one point, it shut the system down. There's a big sense of helplessness with it. People are trapped, people are injured, people are dying, and the best you can do is say, well, we'll get somebody there as soon as we can more or less. Chad Elliott in the KZRG 24 Hour Storm Center. Homes are damaged in Joplin. Uh, one guy just called up. He says his home was totaled. So I just had another caller say a couple of houses damaged over by St. John's uh, Hospital. As a parent who had two children in the high school, it, it terrifies you to think that that could have happened during a school day. I think our death toll would have probably been much higher if it had. Down 249 and I 44. 
we had a civilian actually grab his radio and yell officer down because she found the vehicle with the windows all out and the no officer nowhere around. Well, that was a civilian using our radio? A civilian using our radio. It was 357 vehicle that she was calling from. Twenty-fourth of all, my, my house is gone. If I power lines down at about twenty-fourth and ship, I can't cross any further south. When I heard the officer down call, I immediately checked my radio because it was coming to see the vehicle. It was coming from Officer Waters' vehicle. When did our last contact with Officer Waters? Last day he wasn't moving. There was that clinch and that minute of panic, um, but I checked my radio. 270 status. I'm in the ditch just north at 241 and 44. He was safe. He was under the bridge. He was actually taking care of people at that point but it's still a terrifying feeling to hear that come over the radio at you. Chad Elliott in the KCRG 24-hour storm center. Lots of reports of damage. Let me stress that. We, the phones are ringing off the hook. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Power lines down, power lines down. Go back to where you came. Go north. I want to go east. Okay. As we moved off to try to intercept the tornado, we encountered the power lines that were flashing uh, as the tornado was hitting him earlier. Uh, oh, let's, go, let's go right through downtown Joplin. We were more focused on just trying to get back to the to a main road where we wouldn't have to encounter any more debris. No, no. Okay, this is where we're at. We're getting rain. We have to hail the RC. We were encountering baseball-sized hailstones. We were actually more going into rescue mode at that point because we knew it was going right through the town of Joplin. We need to get up in the job and help people out. Because that tornado formed so quickly, I don't know how much time people had. So this is really, really, really bad. Oh, that's going right into downtown Joplin. Oh. Going downtown. Huh? Look like it's coming in there. Huh? Could be the eye. There was a calming point there. We thought we were in the eye of the tornado. We went inside and there was just debris everywhere. You would see, you basically saw people's lives just all over the yard. Clothes, pictures. I remember there being a torn up Bible. Things you basically saw if you just threw 20 houses together, shook them up, and then dropped them. Oh, here we go. Nearly just 30, 40 seconds after that is when everything got real crazy. I just remember it being so, so dark real quick. I just remember the trees going back and forth. I remember the, the waves of rain. I remember debris flying by the window, hitting the window. Was. I just was like, man, I, this is this is bad. I could tell how bad this was, and we weren't even around the corner yet. Watching this on your KZRG storm tracker radar, and that is a big area of concern. Tornado warning still in effect until 6:30, and we expect this to continue now. We heard that there had been some damage in Joplin, so we went back to Joplin, going about 85 on the highway, and there was cars passing us going 100. One thing that we are seeing is uh, lots and lots of. Uh, Lots of lots of damage so far. We knew that our son, Connor, was okay. And we knew that our family members were okay, but we did not know if our house had been flattened. And that was just really scary. And uh, still waiting to get more reports coming in. In Carthage, we're getting reports of debris is falling from the sky. Well, at the, at the time of the tornado, Joplin had five fire stations. Two of those uh, um, were destroyed in the storm. So basically what that did was wipe out, you know, half of our uh, emergency response fleet. I recall thinking that if our station had been damaged, then there were going to be a lot of houses and homes that were uh, were damaged as well. What you got there? Our, our whole roof is gone. 
We will be out of service. We do have excessive damage to station forward. We started hearing debris hit the back of the building. My buddy was like, we need to, should we go into the beer cooler over there? Directly after he kind of you know, mentioned that, the front of the store just blew out. The store at 17 and range line has been hit. First thing I've got about possibly 30 people trapped inside the grist down here. The little kids that were in there, I remember hearing that over the older people, just because it seemed so much more genuinely scared. It kind of settled down for a second, and I think it's over. Right when that happened, then the second part of it hit. The ceiling dropped three feet. As the walls of the building got blown away, I could look out and just see the sky. When it passed, everyone was kind of just um, either it had knocked them over or like I was sitting on top of someone's legs. Is everyone okay below me? I'm here, I'm okay. All right, I'm Are trying not okay? to lay on someone. Okay. Somebody's on my back. Everyone was just in shock because you didn't know whether or not people were hurt at that point. This is under me. This is FM 102.9, AM 1310, and we do have uh, Chad, and Chad will be joining us now. We'll check in with him. Good evening, Chad. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Uh, I am on Raceline Road. We were listening to the AM radio station in Joplin. We made a quick decision. A photographer and I hopped in the car and just headed west to Joplin. Raceline is flooding. I am plowing through the water right now. We were just preparing to, to do normal reporting, and it was just going to be a normal shift oh my uh there are people that are they're got to be injured right now josh there are probably people fatalities right now people are trapped in buildings there are buildings missing josh that used to be here they're totally gone once we came in and started seeing the destruction that's when we started to get a sense of this is bigger than what we anticipated i'm gonna tell you one this is chief one go ahead i have clearing skies off to the west so uh, we uh, look to be Towards the end of this event, we do have a tremendous amount of debris out here in the two area. Looks like this is going to be very near the, uh, the path of uh, the tornado. We had literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, of 911 calls in the first 24 hours. Most of us are used to tornadoes that move through an area very quickly and then are gone. This one took 30 minutes to get across town. Normally, we can get out a lot faster and start responding. We just weren't able to with this one. We saw debris, but we saw houses and, and buildings intact. I was thinking, okay, the tornado brushed us, you know, the north side of town or something like that. This is bad. Oh damage. my gosh. This is bad. Damage. Oh my gosh. It wasn't until we got deeper into Joplin 
that we started to notice some pretty heavy damage. Uh, okay, are you talking to Kevin? What, what yeah, do we want? I don't know. Where we, I, uh, I don't know. Walking around. I, I don't know. And that's when we somehow met up with Kevin and his dad. We ended up in the same place, and I said, hey, we need to start pulling people out of the rubble. Look at that. That is destroyed completely. When we first parked, we couldn't see anyone. But nobody was out walking around. Nobody was nobody was to be seen because it I mean it literally just happened. People were still trying to crawl out from the rubble. Oh my gosh. Well, I was definitely not mentally prepared to see what I saw. Or I don't think the other guys were either. It was a uh, total devastation. some point it was like we just kind of felt like sitting ducks I said well you know we probably should move and we probably should go towards where the sun is and so we actually headed west what? oh just, i don't know missing or... got about half a block and we saw a tree down saw another tree down and I remember one house there being three or four trees falling every which way and the house was actually missed so then i remember saying oh they got it real bad in this part and then as we're driving, there's a fence line, and once we crossed that fence line, it was like a bomb went off. Oh! Oh! Ooh. You got this? The more you went west, the more it got more serious. just being calm like it was all this destruction all this chaos but it was like eerily quiet you could see you could hear the alarm you know like alarms going off uh, honking that was the majority of the noise at that time and then the rain it was still raining it almost looked like you hit pause this was like the end of the world boys, as I call them, <laughs> fanned out to try to see who they could help in the area. Uh, I'd stayed behind with the vehicles. I cannot believe this. Oh, the lady out with a broken back. A gentleman approached me and said, there's a lady that's underneath her own wall. She can't get out, and she's, she's really hurt. As we were talking with her, holding the wall up, uh, she said that her back was hurting her and she couldn't sit up. So we decided to get a, a door that we found in the rubble and put her on the, the door and uh, take her to a waiting pickup truck that was going to take uh, people to the hospital. Yeah, I remember the, the man with his, with his baby son, and the baby was bleeding really bad. Uh, they they had up. been in a pickup that got hit, but he asked whether we could get him to the hospital. We said, sure. And so we headed out <laughs> to the hospital. Broadcasting live from the darkened KZRG 24-hour storm center. Power is out. We are running on backup generators at this hour. And it was like driving through a war zone, needless to say. As soon as we topped this little crest, you could see the hospital, and our hearts just sank like, oh my gosh, now what do we do? I understand clear. I got calls from the station that the hospitals were in from there. I'm trying to get to that side of town. They're just people, Josh, stunned. They're standing, sobbing on the... I think we lost uh, Chad Elliott.
viewed by St. John's Hospital and everything in this area has sustained very heavy damage. I repeat, very heavy damage. Nope, I copy that, yeah. We topped the hill and it was like a scene from a movie. And then the hospital, on top of everything else, the hospital, the place that's supposed to heal people, had been hit. And so we're just like, what do we do now? We pull up by the hospital, and there's they already had had triage units essentially on the grass. St. John's took a direct hit from the tornado that day. We ended up sending a uh, couple, three crews uh, to that area to help the St. John's staff evacuate the building. I uh, walked up to the main hospital, uh, found some uh, fellow security guys that uh, I was supposed to work with that night. You know, we was like, we need to get patients out of here. And uh, we started from the ninth floor and uh, worked ourselves all the way down to one. If they couldn't walk, you know, we was practically picking them up and carrying them down the stairwell. No uh, staff was lost. He was all accounted for and uh, patients there was no patients lost in the hospital that was in-house. Uh, they was all accounted for as well. We have also heard reports that some of the debris from the hospital has reached areas like Willard. A woman was reportedly seen in x-ray, uh, x-rays in her front yard, and that just gives you a visual to how far this damage is reaching. But if you think this is bad, check out this over here. This is a neighborhood that is completely flattened by this tornado. There are dozens of people walking up and down the street trying to figure out if their loved ones are. It was horrific. <laughs> there was um, people yelling, looking, trying to find their loved ones. Um, the smell of natural gas was um, something that I've never smelled before in that, even in all the tornado zones that I've been in. There's a whole neighborhood that surrounds the hospital. And you couldn't pick out one home. We have sustained a major direct hit here in Joplin. Now, Chad, you, you've described uh, some, some damage, and I, we're trying to understand the situation. And as we can understand it now, uh, Joplin will never be the same after this tornadic event. I was on the air when the tornado hit. And just a few blocks from our station, utter devastation. People were crying, really didn't know what to do. People were being hauled away in the back of pickup trucks with emergency personnel holding, um, holding just pieces uh, of these people together. And when I was at 24th and Main, I could look all the way to the west and all the way to the east, and I saw no structure standing. And there was no end to the damage path that you could see. Dylan. Yes. Like, I don't recognize where I'm at right now. Yeah. This, this is the Walmart here? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you need a ride somewhere? Um, no. I'm just going to see if my car is. Okay, should be right okay. over here. All right, man. Are there not. people still in there? Yeah, there's some um, guy. He usually is a door greeter, and he's um stuck under some brick. One of the greeters was trapped in the entrance. When we actually got around to, the, to that side of the parking lot, I mean, you couldn't, there was no way you could go there and just start picking up huge pieces of concrete. I don't think I believe what I'm seeing right you want to ride somewhere? And I remember seeing just a guy walking like a zombie and his, he had blood on his arm and he was just, just not present. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to go over here. I don't know, I don't want to be stuck. Somebody can need help. Do you need help? <laughs> here, need, get in, get in. Need, do you need to get I in? I leave, Greg's gonna come get me. Okay, Greg's gonna come get you. Do you want to sit in the car? In the middle of the devastation, is really where you saw um, the best of humanity come out. People are, people are, people are getting help. There's people are helping, they're all throughout the parking lot. Is this for real? 
Y'all need a ride? Oh my goodness. When we got back in Joplin, we had to park about 11 blocks from our house. We were hearing people screaming for help, and we were basically helpless because we couldn't pull anybody out of anything. And there was this lady that came up to me, and she asked if I had seen a baby or heard a baby screaming. And she said she had lost her 13-month-old baby in the tornado, and they were looking for the baby to see if it was alive or hearing cries or anything. And we were absolutely helpless at that point. We didn't know. We didn't know what to say to her. I mean, we didn't hear anything, so the baby did not make it, and the baby got sucked out of her arms, like she said, and they found it, um, I think, about a couple of miles east of our house. Pedestrian says that there's a house on top of a gentleman at the 1800 block of Wall. Oh my goodness. And we just had to walk with our sandals on all the way down to our house. There was nothing left of our house. And it was getting dark, so we couldn't even start to salvage anything. We were trying to see if anybody else needed help in search and rescue that night. I do not think we would be alive if we would have been in the house that evening. So I was just going through the motions at that point. I didn't know how to deal with this. I just wanted to salvage anything that I could find. Not being able to salvage anything was hard then, but those things just aren't important. That's just stuff. You can go buy anything at the store, but you you can't buy a family member. This is where we climbed out. It was still raining. People used beer boxes down here to, as steps. My buddy Corey went over and where the wall had fallen over, there was kind of a a uh, break between the roof and the wall, and we kind of just shimmied up that wall. It's not hard to get out. Behind the gas station, it was pretty much just an open field. Our car was picked up and set down kind of where the building had been. There was a cow laying there that had been like, hit by debris. All right, here's the gas station that we were at. We parked right over there. Our car got blown away, but the front door was just right there. No one was hurt in the cooler other than just minor like, bruises and cuts. That right there is where we climbed out. All the shelving was falling down. That's about where we were laying. I do feel really lucky that for whatever reason, I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose a loved one. There's a whole lot of emotions that go into it um, because there's so many other people in the community that were affected um, so much more negatively than I feel like I was. The Joplin tornado was anywhere from a half mile to three quarter mile wide at its widest point. It was on the ground for about 13 miles. Approximately 7,500 homes were damaged. We ended up with 161 people uh, that were deceased from the tornado. They were still doing a rescue operation, and they were trying to retrieve bodies. And we heard the search and rescue dogs barking over and over, and I heard the dogs barking in my head for weeks when I would try to sleep. 
my brother. There was absolutely nothing left of his house. He thankfully and his family lived in the basement, so it's just kind of crazy. I finally made it up to where my home was at. It was severely damaged, but thank God my wife and daughter were still alive. But just up the street from where we lived, a lot of people had died that day. My home was destroyed. Um, it was in the tornado path. I found out about it, I think it was on the second day, I think it was Tuesday morning. One of my firefighters who had lived down the street from me came in and um, said, hey, Chief, I'm, I'm really sorry about your home. And I, you know, I just looked at him and said, I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean? Um, you know, I figured it was still there and everything was good. And he said, uh, Chief, your home's destroyed. There's something to be said for how much progress Joplin has made since that night. The debris is mostly cleared and people are truly moving on. We have a uh, united focus on rebuilding the city and, you know, coming back better than we were before. We've learned a lot through the situation about love and kindness and just everybody coming together as a community. It's like a family. What I'm doing now is I'm finding housing for people who lost their homes and their lives in this tornado. It kind of goes full circle where I'm, where I'm still on an everyday basis in some way or another dealing with what happened. The number of volunteers that came to the city to help um, is just absolutely beyond description. You know, they're helping us move forward um, to, our, you know, our new lives and our new normal. They can't give us back our lives that, you know, we had on May 21st, because what we had before and what we knew before, it's gone. It, uh, it doesn't exist, it, and it will never exist again, other than the memories of the citizens and uh, the people that have lived here in their lives.